obviously out here in California, being from Silicon Valley where you're from and where I'm still working, a lot of the impetus is on STEM. It's very important, obviously. I mean, you've got so much tech around here, but in this world of pushing that envelope for STEM, where do you think theater can still fit in as an important piece for a high school student? I think that uh, theater breaks some social boundaries that uh, a STEM, uh, a science-centered education can't necessarily do. So one of the things that was always so special about being able to do theater in high school is, is that it was all four grades, that it was freshmen through seniors. And if you were a freshman, you sort of had to work your way up, but you were still in the presence of, of these older students, and it, and it helped break down some barriers. It also, for me, helped break down some barriers between people in my own grade, that I was in, in, on one track and there were other students that were on a different track within the same grade, and it helped. If I didn't need them to do something for me in a group project setting, which always made me angry, but if I didn't need that from them, if we could work together on something that wasn't going to affect my grade, if we could work together on something that wasn't going to change my academic status, that was really important and it, socially just hugely significant to learning how to play, learning how to communicate and collaborate, which is something that you don't necessarily learn doing group projects because your grade is writing on it. But when you're doing theater, you have more freedom to create. And if you're working on something like that, those collaborative skills have taken me a lot farther than my uh, calculus grade ever has. So I think that both aspects are really important. And this is from somebody who was a class valedictorian at Pioneer, as I seem to recall. That is true. So we're not talking about somebody who focused on English and humanities and then just, I would, it's almost mean to say plotted along in the sciences, but... <laughs> By the way, I'm describing myself. <laughs> but you had, <laughs> and, and you had an I academic still, passion. I, I still tutor. Like, I, I do have academic passion. I grew up in a Silicon Valley household of, full of nerds. My mom works for NASA. My dad uh, is a, a CFO, and he runs his own company now. And my brother is an engineer who, uh, until recently, worked at Lockheed Martin, and he's starting on a new, a new engineering gig this month. So it's... I understand the importance of science and technology, and I really think that trying to understand the way things work is should be inherent to the way that human beings are taught to deal with the world. And theater provides that as well. You can theater is all problem solving. How do I how do I tell this story the best way? And how do I plug in these lights and cue them to help tell the story? And what if I don't have enough power to run all these lights? Well, there's math involved in figuring out how to get enough power to turn on all your all your lights for a certain cue. There's shortwave and longwave radiation involved in, in the sound. If you've ever used wireless sound, that stuff gets really, really finicky, and you need science to be able to solve the issue. So the two, science, science and uh, theater, are not enemies. They have to work together, especially as we move forward. You, we're integrating more and more technology with our theater, and you got to know how to do both sides. Definitely. Melanie, what's your dream role? Oh, man, I've had some good ones. Oh, Peter Pan! <laughs> I'm assuming Peter Pan ain't Peter Pan. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. Some people say Wendy. Um, <laughs> what show would you never do? They offer you a full ride, equity contract, everything's amazing. You get to do it on Broadway. What would you never do? Phantom of the Opera. Why? Weber. Music is the gift I give to you. Let's see the gross half of your face. <laughs> Favorite audition song. All that jazz. 
If your life were a musical or a play, what would the title be? Sunshine and Rainbows. <laughs> and to finish off today, for our viewers, what's the one bit of advice you'd have for a high school theater kid? Find a skill. Like, find something that you can do that will always make sure you have food in your refrigerator. And that could be, I don't know, working the spotlight. That could be sewing costumes. There's so many amazing parts of theater that are not necessarily performing. And I know that we get so excited about being able to perform because it's thrilling and it's amazing. But there's a huge network of support that every single paid performer requires in order to be able to do their job. And as somebody who has become a producer in, instead of being a performer, I, would, I wouldn't trade this like, for a desk job somewhere. I'm still doing theater. I make a living doing theater. I'm just not the person on stage. And that's that's great. So just take that into consideration. Darn good bit of advice. Melanie, thank you so much for your time today. And everybody, after you're done watching this, of course, head over to hsspotlight.com. Head over to our Facebook page. Make sure you like us. Don't just go. Like us. Stay in the loop. And once again, thank you for visiting hsspotlight.com. Melanie, again, thank you so much. My pleasure.